couch dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome blues lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. Some of you who watched my previous blues lessons wrote me and asked me to do a lesson on blues turnarounds. So, here it is, you got it. I'm gonna teach you eight essential blues turnaround licks. And uh, even though we're gonna learn them in the key of E, we're gonna learn blues turnaround licks all over the neck. And then I'm gonna show you how you can transpose them very, very easily into other keys. So. It's a lot more than just the eight essential blues turnaround licks. So uh, what is a blues turnaround? Straightforward, uh, basically speaking, a blues turnaround is moving chromatically between two voicings of the same chord. What do I mean by that? If it sounded like gibberish, I'll explain. E, okay? We have the E shape. If we go by the caged method, and if you don't know the caged method, go watch my lesson on the caged method. It's very, very easy to learn the caged method. The next chord shape is gonna look like D. So if we count, it's gonna be D, D sharp, and E. So D shape on four, on the fourth fret. So you have four, five, four. Okay, so this is E, and this is E. Now we're talking blues here, so let's turn that E into E7. So E7, okay, E, with nothing on the D string, with three on the second string. Okay, so E7, and D turns into D7. So instead of four, five, four, we have four, three, four. Okay, it's the same seventh note. This note, okay, the D note. So, this is E7, this is E7. And now the fun begins. We're gonna move chromatically between these two shapes and then we're gonna try for other shapes, but let's explore the possibilities with these two shapes first. The basic turnaround. So we have this. If we take this chromatically down, we get this. Immediately we get a turnaround. So fourth fret, third fret, second fret and E or E7 and immediately we have a very very crude turnaround. I say crude because we don't need the whole chord. The whole idea here is to build licks out of this. So the first lick um, is gonna be this. Okay? We're just gonna choose notes of the chords. Now even if we play the whole chord shape and we just play strings one and three, we get this. And this is the first turnaround we're gonna learn. You can also hammer on the zero to one on the third string. So it's four and four, three and three, two and two, and zero and one. All on strings one and three. This is your very first turnaround. Now, if we choose to play strings two and three, then we get this. Okay? And we're not playing this, okay? We're playing this, a normal E chord. So it's E7 to E. So it's gonna be um, three and four on strings two and three, then two and three, then one and two, and then zero and one. Why? Because if you check it out, you have two and three, uh, sorry, three and four here, and then two and three, and then one and two, and then zero and one. We're just choosing notes out of those chords, the chord shapes. So, okay, now this is still very crude because it's kind of boring. So let's explore different ways we can play these two. Um, with this one, we can play okay, or okay, meaning we play strings th uh, three one three, and then again three one three, three one three, and then we hammer on on the third string and then play the first string. Okay, so. The second turnaround, we can do this. Okay, we can add the open E string because it's E. 
it's the root note. So um, we can also do this. with the high notes, with the G sharp, G and F sharp, but let's do it with the open E string first. So we have three and four on strings two and three, and we play them, and then the open E string, and then we play them again. Okay, so two and three, one, two and three. And then again, a fret down, then again, and then we play strings two and three, and we hammer on one on the uh, third string. And the open E string. So now you can find other ways to do that. You can just arpeggiate the chord, okay, without the last E note, just for variation. So uh, just arpeggiate strings three, two, one, all the way, and you can slide into it. Okay, you can also play the last one or. Seven, if you like, or the whole chord even. You see, the options are up to you, but basically we're learning the, uh, the building stones of the turnarounds. So um, let's continue. Um, we can also do this. Okay, we can play two E strings with each shape and one third string. manipulate it you can try it yourself it's that easy um, so those are the first two turnaround shapes now if we go uh, to the um, lower notes strings three and four we get this one and two in the E shape okay so let's choose those notes one and two on strings three and four. Now, if we um, take the C chord shape, uh, which is a bar on four and a C chord shape, this is E, because C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So this is the shape. So look at what we have on strings three and four. We have this. We have uh, four and six. So we can take this and move chromatically back to one and two. This is gonna be our next turnaround. So four and six, three and five, two and four, and then one and two. And again, we can manipulate that. Okay, or this. Okay, from one to two, again, chromatically. Okay, so. And if you want an even lower um, turnaround, we're gonna add another note. But before that, let's try to add the high E string. See? Starts to sound kinda piano-ish. So, or together. Okay? You can play the E string all the way. we're gonna add isn't gonna be this one it's not gonna be the E note this is a bass note this is E so uh, what we're gonna do is add a seventh note so if this is E then the seventh the D note okay two frets below on five so four six and five on strings three four and five okay this is another shape of E7 a very unusual shape but for a turnaround purposes this is a great shape and we move that down into an E shape or an E7 shape okay now this is a bit low so it's a bit muddy but when you play it in different keys it's gonna sound awesome granted this sounds a bit weird because nobody really uses that shape but it's a viable turnaround and if you're making a fingerstyle blues arrangement of something you can use it okay? as
as a finisher. You can finish a song with this. You can finish a blues song with this. Um, just because it's really low and somber. Now, um, let's go to an even lower option, which is this. Okay? Now, what is this? If we take the E7 D shape, we have a high G sharp note. Okay, so we can exchange that for a low G sharp note. Just instead of four on the E string, you play four on the E bass string. So you still leave four on the third string, and you just invert this shape into this shape. Okay, instead of the first string, the sixth string. So. So um, it's four and four on strings three and six, and then three and three, two and two, and then one and zero. Just like on strings one and three, but this time on three and six. Okay? And you can also do this. Okay? You can play strings two and three, the second turnaround shape, with the extra bass note from the last turnaround shape that we learned. Okay, this uh, creates a kind of uh, moving block, uh, but the notes have some distance between them, so it sounds nice. Okay, but again, this is not something very common. The more common way is this. Okay, the two-note version. Um, so, so far we have five turnarounds between uh, three different shapes. The D shape, the C shape, and the E shape. So let's recap. Okay. And now, we have three more shapes to learn. The first shape is very, very simple. It's uh, exactly like the first one, but four frets up. Why? Because this is an outline of E or E7, and this is an outline of this E7. We have seven and seven, incidentally, uh, on one and three. Okay, so this is also E7. So we take seven and seven and we move it chromatically down to four and four from the A shape to the D shape. Okay, so again, we have all the same options. Okay, and uh, there's not much to elaborate on that. And if we take it on the next uh, set of strings, on two and four, we have it here. Okay, which is uh, strings 2 and 4 on 12, 11, 10, and 9. It's the same shape. Okay, 12, 11, 10, and 9 on strings 2 and 4. Why? Because this is an octave of this, which is the E shape, the basic E shape. So it's from the E shape to the A shape, to this, okay? Now, this is the important thing. You can add the high E note on 12 and add it to this. And have another turnaround. So um, 12 and 12 on strings, two and four, and then the high E note, 12 on the E string. Okay, so it's... Now, uh, you have to get used to it. Okay? The high E note. So that's another turnaround shape. Okay, or... Uh, because playing this... Is, I don't know, sounds a bit thin in my opinion, so... I like to kind of pick strum it. Now uh, I can I slide from uh, eight to nine using my barring finger. Okay, so okay, this is the seventh shape. Now for our last shape before we start transposing, 
um, we're going to take a different concept. Now, for E7, the dominant chord for E7 would be B7. Okay, it's the fifth chord of the scale. So, um, in an E blues, you have E7, A7, and B7. So, we take that B7, and we take that up to frets to C sharp 7, so we can have that chromatic move between C sharp 7 and B7, and then we finish on E, like this. Okay? But again, this is very crude. Let's learn this first. C sharp 7, we have 4, 3, 4. Looks familiar? We had it here, now it's here. On strings 3, 4, and 5. We play that, and then down a fret, down a fret, we're at B7, being the dominant chord that leads us to E, or E7, so... Now, um, this works because this still has the move that we had here, and here, and here, and here. So, this is the chromatic move that we base everything upon. So, this time we just harmonize it a bit differently. Okay? And we harmonize it by a fourth. Um, instead of G sharp, we play C sharp. So, we get kind of an interesting harmony out of this. Um, but let's uh, not get too much into theory here. This works, it sounds good, doesn't really matter why. As long as it sounds good, it sounds good. So uh, you can play uh, 4 and 4, 3 and 3, 2 and 2, and 1 and 2, or 1 on the 3rd string and the E bass string. Okay, like this. Okay. This actually sounds a bit weird, but still sounds interesting in some way. Uh, might fit a compositional choice. Um, but this is the eighth and last turnaround shape. So let's uh, work on transposing them. First of all, this one works terrifically on G because this is actually the top of the G shape. So um, we have this, right? So on G, you can do this. Or um, you take the same idea, just lower it back down to the third fret. Okay, or finish right on G. But uh, I don't know why I started with that one. <clears throat> um, let's take it to A. Okay? We have A, right? Um, so E shaped is gonna be a bar on five E shape. So four frets up, we're gonna have the D shape. Okay, so everything applies. Just instead of one and zero, you have um, let's say five and six. You have a finger where the open string is, and you have a finger one fret up on the third string. So. It's exactly the same thing, but moving between these two shapes. So, um, okay? and the same goes to this. Okay? It's the same idea. Okay? You have, you can also play this, okay? or something like this. Uh, you can just choose the chromatics, and everything else works the same way. Same thing, you just take the shape, you find where the E shape and the D shapes are, and you just change between them. Or the C shape and the E shape, and you do or this. And uh, when you have the A shape, you can take it four frets up and do this. This. And you can also combine it and do this, okay? which is uh, the A shape and the G shapes together. This is 
um, you know, the A shape is here, but if you play the G shape, it's this with the G chord head, as I showed you in the uh, cage method lesson. So, or you can just do this. the high seventh note so or and don't forget the chromatic slides those add a lot of bluesiness to it a bit of jazziness but um, they add to the blues feel of things and you can also slide from far away okay like this um, You can combine shapes, uh, but you see it's not very difficult to transpose it. And if you've been watching so far, I want to teach you one extra um, turnaround. It's not an essential turnaround, but it's a brilliant turnaround by Jerry Reed, taking from um, Jiffy Jam. It goes like this. Now this is a terrific example of creative turnarounding. He still has. The chromatic move here. He has the high E note as a pedal note, but instead of this, he plays a melody. Okay? Kind of a jazzy approach note melody. Okay, so it's um, on strings 1, 2, and 4. It's 12, 9, and 12. Then it's 12, 10, and and 11 okay the 12 went down chromatically to 11 and the 9 went up to 10 then the 11 goes down to 10 and this goes to 8 on the second string and you finish on the e shape so um okay you can also appreciate it or You can also be creative with your own shapes. You can uh, choose to do something like this. Okay? Instead of uh, 4 3 2 0 on the E string, you can do 4 0 2 0. And then you get a melody. So try to build melodies, but keep the chromatic in the basis of everything. So I'll let you go practice this. Uh, hope you had fun. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? There is a ton of lessons already here, and I upload a new one regularly. So uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and go download the tab. The link is right below in the description. The tab is for free, of course, just like everything is on Lick and Riff. And if you want to give something back anyway, there's a large blue donation button right above the tabs. You can't miss it. It's large. It's blue it says donate and uh, I'd appreciate any donation everything comes right back into lick and ref into your guitar education into making time to work on these lessons film them edit them and um, you know it all takes time and work so I appreciate any help whatsoever and any donation you choose to make thank you very much feel free to share this lesson go have fun and I'll see you the next time bye for now thanks for watching